Hello, welcome to Level Chain Channel. My name is Claudio Fonseca, and this is the third video about the Autoland on the 737. This time we are going to talk about fail operational airplanes. Okay, I really hope you watch the first video that is going to tell you the requirements for you to do an auto land on the 737 i really hope that you also watch the second video where i talked about uh, fail passive airplanes which is the most common 737 type of auto land and this is the third video about the second type of auto land on the 737 which are the fail operational airplanes and to configure an airplane as fail operational you have to go on your PMDG, you go to the menu, PMDG setup, aircraft, equipments, and then on the first page, on the, on the fourth line, you will have Autoland as FAU passive, usually, and you can change to FAU OP, which means FAU operational, okay? So, what does it mean? FAU operational and I'm not going to explain to you the technical details I'm going only to explain what you see on the airplane and how the Autoland is performed here on the PMDG the first thing that you are going to notice is inside the airplane when you have an FAU operational airplane here on the MFD display that I'm going to come really close here you will see a third button which is this C slash R okay so on a fail passive airplane you only have engine and systems okay on the fail operational airplanes you also have the cancel and recall button that's why C slash R is cancel and recall okay which basically what it does is when you press cancel or recall is going to show here below the engine indications on uh, the engine display if you have any failure related to the Autoland status of this airplane okay if you press it like I'm pressing and I don't see anything here showing on the list no messages here means the airplane is fully capable of performing a fail operational auto land on this airplane okay and so the first thing for you to notice once you are in the cockpit if you are in a fail passive or fail operational is this button if you have this cancel recall button that means your airplane was set it up for a fail operational airplane okay so now i'm going to go uh let me try to make everything black here for you and i can bring how it works the fail operational system in terms of autopilot for your airplane okay let's go outside and this is the best for you to understand that fail operational works exactly the same as the fail passive initially until you reach 1500 feet above uh, the ground elevation once you reach 1500 feet again the ILS DMS test is going to happen okay and then what you are going to see for these airplanes instead of only flare to be armed you are going to see also rollout to be armed below the localizer indication okay so on the fail passive you will have flare below glide slope on the fail operational you will have flare below glide slope and also roll out below the localizer okay and also the single channel is not going to be replaced by command is going to be replaced by land three okay then the same thing is going to happen at uh, 50 feet the flare will engage and will perform an auto land just like we did on the previous video but on the fail operational airplane, you also have the rollout mode, which means that at, at two feet radial altimeter, which means when the airplane is touching down on the runway, the rollout mode will engage and maintain the runway alignment without any pilot intervention. So if you have a fail operational airplane, the airplane is capable of land and maintain itself on the center line that's the main difference and that's why you have an extra mode which is the roller mode that is going to be uh, armed during your approach and is going to engage at two feet okay 
this is the main difference for you so if you want an airplane that is capable of landing and continue on the center line you will have to select fail operational okay one thing is very important here as the pilot is not controlling the runway center line if the pilot really wants to do something he has to disengage autopilot and then uh, start applying rudder to control the center line uh, for those airplanes on the fail passive Disengaging the autopilot to control the center line with the rudder is not a requirement, but it's always a good practice as if you change from one airplane to the other, you will always do the correct procedure. Okay, so once you land and you feel that you need to control the airplane, it doesn't matter if it's fail operational or fail passive, disengage the autopilot and you're always going to be uh, correct in this case. Okay, what happens is if you want on a fail operational airplane, like this one, the airplane is trying to maintain the runway center line and then you are not satisfied with what the airplane is doing and then you try to move your rudder, you will see that you will be able to move your rudder but the airplane will try to counteract whatever you are doing to maintain the center line. Okay, so the airplane is going to basically continue doing what it was doing before unless you really uh, enter too much rudder the problem is once you release your autopilot once you disengage your autopilot all that compensation is not working anymore and out of nothing everything that you are doing with your rudder will be immediately sent to the airplane flight controls and most probably you are going to miss your runway alignment okay so do not use manual controls with the autopilot on, even after landing. First, disengage your autopilot and then use your rudder to control the airplane on the center line if you are not satisfied with the rollout mode. But 99.999% of the cases, the rollout mode is the best option and is going to keep the airplane on the center line. Unless it's very clear for the pilot that the airplane is not doing properly because a failure on the rollout mode or a fail on the localizer or something else then of course you disengage autopilot and you apply manual inputs okay so main differences again from the fail passive on this one you have also rollout mode armed at and, and engage at two feet and the indication of command the indication for the autopilot is not going to change from single channel to command It's going to change from single channel to land 3 it can also change to land 2 in with some degradation on the autopilot system yes on the airplane system yes it can happen but then you will have again a fail passive airplane able of doing rollout so it's a mix of whatever you had in the fail passive and uh, what you have here on the fail operational so I'm not going to go into details when you have some s subsystems degradation or this kind of thing in a perfect airplane on the fail operational you will have rollout armed flare armed and land tree just below 1500 feet at 50 feet flare will engage will flare the airplane the airplane when it's about to touch down rollout mode will engage and will keep the runway alignment okay once the airplane is fully stopped or once you want to taxi by yourself disengage autopilot and continue taxiing by yourself okay so let's go to the airplane and let's do it now okay so now we know we selected a fail operational airplane we can go back to the standard and now i'm going to release this airplane so the airplane is flying remember from the first video you can arm the autopilot sorry the approach mode and then you can arm the second autopilot okay so localizer is capture you are on single channel okay and now the glide slope is going to be captured so we set the gear down flaps to 15 we can we reduce our speed air speed arm the speed brake And as we continue going down, we can select flaps 30 and reduce our speed to VREF plus 5. Okay, now that we are going to reach 1500 feet, radio altimeter, 
the ILS test is going to happen. Glides will open, localize, it will blink. And once the test is complete, now on this FAIL operational, we see the rollout that was not there for FAIL passive. We see the flare, which is the same as the FAIL operation, as, as the FAIL passive. So for FAIL passive and FAIL operational, the flare is the same. Only for FAIL operational rollout mode is added. And instead of command, you have land tree telling the airplane is capable of a FAIL operational landing. Okay? Once again, at 50 feet, you are going to see flare. And at 2 feet, you are going to see rollout. Around 30 feet, you are going to see idle here when is the airplane reducing uh, the thrust to idle, okay? So let's go back to the standard one. And from now on, I'm going to keep quiet for you to see these changes, to see flare engaging at 50 feet, to see rollout engaging at 2 feet, and the airplane not only landing, but maintaining the runway center line after landing, okay? So, of course, minor deviation left or right here in the simulator may happen due to the ILS antenna alignment itself. Of course, in real life, the antenna is perfectly aligned with the runway center line and the airplane will perfectly maintain the center line, okay? So, here we go. We are reaching almost 200 feet now and now you can follow and fail operational landing so you see rollout and flare they are both there and on this one, as you can see, the airplane is maintaining the ILS center line, okay? So, the airplane is completely on the center of your localizer, okay? Because the rollout mode was armed, okay? So, this is a fail operational airplane on the PMDG itself. It's not completely aligned with the runway center line because the ILS is not completely aligned with the runway. As you can see, the airplane has a very good indication that we are on the center. It's not maintaining the center because this ILS is not aligned with the runway center line. Couple of things that, of course, Microsoft Flight Simulator has to improve to align uh, the ILSs and also uh, the sanitary creators itself. So that's something that should be more easier to align both things, like to align localizer with the runway itself. What we have to understand is that most probably these localizer and glide slope uh, antennas, uh, they are set here on my uh, system by Navigraph. So Navigraph has the real world uh, geographical coordinates for these systems. Okay, so it's going to, to place those systems where it's supposed to be like in real life. And the minor differences that we have here, like a few meters left or right, is because the sanity itself on the Microsoft Flight Simulator, it doesn't perfectly match uh, the real runway in the real world okay as you can see it's just a few meters it's not a big deal but the airplane was capable of rolling out on the runway okay you're not going to see it perfectly on your airplane but that's what happened uh, in real life following the localizer okay so remember in this case we still have the autopilot connected still land three there if I'm rolling out and I want to steer this airplane to the left, okay, so let's just uh, add some thrust here so the airplane uh, will, will start moving again. You will see the rollout mode is still there. So if I want to control and take my airplane back to the left, I have to disengage autopilot and then go left, okay? I didn't add too much thrust, but then once you have your 
autopilot disengage then you can go left and the airplane will respond to your commands okay so that's it i hope you enjoy uh, this uh, series of three videos about the autoland on the 737 the important thing for me is that you now know how to perform an autoland once again ILS frequency, both sides, ILS course, both sides, arm approach mode, select the second autopilot. Then, depending on the fail operational or fail passive, here on the PMDG, you will have only an auto land or an auto land and a rollout uh, through your localizer on the ground. Okay, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, please hit the like button. Any doubt, any comments? You have the comment space below. I will try to answer everyone. And I see you soon. Bye-bye.